Paranormal Punches is part of the Podbelly Network. Go to podbelly.com for more great podcasts. Hey, y'all. This is Frank the Bigfoot, and you're listening to the Paranormal Puncher. Hey friends, <laughs> welcome to another episode of Paranormal Punchers. I'm Mark. I'm Alicia. I'm Nash. I'm Dave. And we are recording in Dave's kitchen. So if it sounds a little different, that's why. Uh, and we're here because Dave, this whole episode is all because of you. Because you traveled to India and now you're going to tell us about the Mysore curse. Yes. Yeah. This would have been a bad uh, episode to skip, right? Mm-hmm. Right, yeah, you had to be here, bro. <laughs> right. uh, if you would have caught off sick. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and before we get rolling, I want to just clue the audience in on how uh, today's recording is going, because we're going to talk about a curse. I swear, this episode is cursed. Mm-hmm. So on the way down, I realized I forgot an SD card. No problem. I'll just plug uh, in the computer. We'll use StreamYard to the, uh, record. I forgot the adapter to connect my mixer to the laptop. Dave doesn't have any of those cables. Then we found an SD card um, in a digital camera, started recording, and I realized it stopped recording because the disc was full. So there's definitely some brilliant things we said. Trust me. There were some brilliant and funny things we said. We were really, really good <laughs> right, yeah. on the take one of this episode. Yeah, yes. <laughs> and then on top of that, Dave got a plumbing issue and there's water coming out in his office. So yeah. this episode yeah. is truly, truly cursed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. So. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, where did this episode come from? So, uh, as Mark, you said, uh, <laughs> India, I got to uh, take a business trip over to uh, Bangalore, India in August of this year and uh, meeting with my team and, and um, had a pretty good time there. Um, while I was there over the weekend, um, the team and I traveled over to uh, the city of Mysore which is about three hours away um, uh, drive from Bangalore. So the, um, while we were on the drive, uh, talking with the team, you know, said, you know, for those that weren't aware, I am part of this group, Paranormal Punchers. We do the podcast. And, um, Did they want autographs once you, once you said that? No. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm curious what you had for lunch when you were there, because you, you said you guys went to lunch over in Mysore. Right. What did you have? Um, all kinds of stuff. Mm. Like every meal was like a little buffet. Oh, I'll try a, a whole nice. bunch of different things. Oh, so, yeah. I kill buffets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it wasn't I a, bet you do. That's your I middle day. Uh-huh. It wasn't a buffet. Nash, it was I more of buffets. a bring all kinds of stuff. Because it's like to the a table. bunch of I, bunch of plates, right. a bunch of dishes and whatnot. Right. Oh, yeah. Cool. yeah. Um, so, anyways, they probably kick you out of India. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mentioned to them about paranormal punchers and if there was any regional topics that uh, we could use for recording. And they said, oh, interestingly enough, we're traveling to Mysore, and Mysore has a curse. So that's where this, the topic for this episode mm-hmm. came from. And uh, yeah, so we'll go into it here. It's still recording, right? Yes, it's yeah, still, okay, yeah, just yeah, still yeah, recording. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm keeping a watchful <laughs> eye on it. You're right. Okay, so... And my eyes are sore. <laughs> oh, no, wait. <laughs> uh, here's where we put the asterisk. Uh, there, there's a good chance we're going to mispronounce a lot of names. Correct, yeah. yes. So, so I'm going to do my best us. here. Uh, but uh, apologies ahead of time for anything that I mispronounce, or any of us mispronounce. Here. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what's the background to this? Uh, so Mysore is the seat of the king and the location of his palace. Um, and it's been that way since the 14th century. Oh, wait, of the, of the, of the current... King. Correct. Okay. The king, the family, the, uh, the Wadiyar. Wadiyar. Yeah, Wadiyar dynasty. <laughs> yep. That's where they live. Correct. And um, so, you know, they've, they've had this for some time now. Uh, but in the early 17th century, um, as kings do, they decided they wanted to take over some of the space of a neighboring king and extend their empire. So the neighboring king, uh, Tirumala Raja, ruled over a region under the Vijay Anagara Empire. Oh, and, boy. <laughs> uh, so, so, the, so Raja was like a, like, a, like a regional, like a duke or something like that? Sort of, yeah. Different. You know, okay. Yeah. One of the things most people don't realize is that um, India is a huge collection of tribes, families, kingdoms. So empires, there's a lot of kings. And, in, right. So okay. everybody, you know, when India became India, that just everybody came together on that. Um, so in this case... Um, 
early 17th century, decided he wanted, or the, the family decided they wanted to take over this king. And it so happened at the time, the king had become ill, and he had retired from the seat of his empire to a small town named Talakad, and his wife took over the administration of, the, of his uh, empire. Uh, after some time, he my was... My wife does that all the time, too. She's always <laughs> getting into my right. business. Right. Well, in this case, it was for the better. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah, <laughs> I guess, sure. Um, so his wife, uh, Rani Ala Malama, sorry, uh, took over the administration of that. And then at some point... The queen. The queen, yep. So the queen um, got word that the king was on his deathbed and needed to travel mm-hmm. as, you know, top speed to come see him before he died. Um, so she did that. She left. And at the same time, or as soon as they heard that she was out, oh, no. <laughs> attack that, the, the, the seat of the empire and take it over. The, oh. the, the Wadiars Wadi- 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 yep. invaded the king and the queen's place. Correct, okay. yes. Okay. Now, at the same time, the queen herself had, um, she wore these, these intricate jewels. And the jewels themselves were offered in service to the goddess Ragna Nayaki. And Ranga Nayaki, sorry. And um, uh, the, the Wadoyars decided they wanted the jewels as well. You know, no sense taking over the palace if you can't have the palace jewels. Right. Um, so they followed the queen. And when they got to the town of uh, Talakad, they, uh, they proceeded to you know, ambush the queen and try to get her to get, hand over the jewels. She chose the other option of, I'm going to jump in the river, river and kill myself. <laughs> right. But before I do that... Wow, I don't know why you, that caused you to laugh. <laughs> sorry. I, I'm sorry. They were really, really nice. <laughs> uh, so before she did that, you know, as she was jumping in, she muttered a curse uh, that has lived on to this day. And the words of the curse, I've seen a couple different versions. This is the one that, that seemed the best. May Talika turn into an expanse of sand. May Malagani become a whirlpool. And may the Mysore kings not have any children for eternity. Mm-hmm. Mm. So that's quite the, uh, the utterance as you're about to die. And uh, she first threw the jewels in the river. And this is a pretty big river. So this isn't something like, oh, they would just dive in after or right. anything. So that was the background of the curse. Can I interject a version of that? Sure. So I so in my research, I I thought it was kind of hard. I thought I saw many different versions of this. Me too. So yeah. the, the version I thought was Raja Wadiar was attacking the king and queen, but the king died. And then and because the king died, the queen couldn't wear jewels anymore. Right. It was like part of the tradition. Like yeah. once, once you're a widow, you're not allowed to wear yeah. jewelry. So right. she then, because she couldn't wear them, she donated them to the temple. Yeah. And all she and then at that point, the they would adorn the statue of the goddess in the temple right. okay. with her jewels. Yeah. And I don't know if she just kept the pearl nose ring. That that there was a yeah that kept coming up yeah also. so right. mm-hmm. so when the Wadiar group went to her to get jewelry they came back and said all we could get was this this nose ring this pearl adorned nose ring and uh, Raja was like I ain't having none of that that uh uh-uh. uh so he <laughs> so he said yo let's get together the crew right. and go get it and he sent to get sent the army back mm-hmm. to go knock on her door and say um excuse me sorry no. Mm-hmm. But when they went there, she was like, yo, I ain't got this stuff no more. And and they didn't believe her. Right. So that's when she was like, peace out. I'm going to head to the river and go kill myself because they didn't understand. There were just soldiers following their right. mm-hmm. command, their, their orders to get the jewelry. And they didn't believe her. So then she jumped in the river. Right. And she never had them because she. So then there's two different parts of I saw one where she killed herself. Because she jumped in the river, she didn't have any jewelry. But then the other version was she was covered in jewelry, and she killed. She jumped in with the jewelry. Right. So there's just a whole lot of different versions of this. Mm-hmm. Right. And she jumped into a whirlpool in the river. Right. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, I was gonna say, hey, Dave, this is your topic. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is good. This is good. I did some research. Come on. <laughs> what are you talking about? You know about? that. I mean, <laughs> I'm actually impressed about that. I right. Know. That first time the past twenty five episodes, <laughs> <laughs> and I mansplained all of it. Yeah, 
So yeah, I mean, given that you know how old the story is, there's, yeah, uh, there has to be different versions there, yeah. through you know. Yeah. Right. And I think they all lead to the same general conclusion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The big points are still there throughout the whole thing. Right. And then as she was jumping in in the river, you know, maybe that's why she maybe she had to be wearing it because it weighed her down and killed her. I, who right. knows? Mm -hmm. But that's when she was like, yo, you're going to get a bunch of dirt and there's some whirlpools in the water. That thing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go swimming. I didn't yeah. see that variation of the curse. <laughs> yeah, that was the, like, the surfer dude. Yo, yeah, man, you're right. going to get like sand. <laughs> God. Forever gonna like never sit anywhere. You can get sand in your you know crevices, man. It Listen, sucks. You want to add anything to that? <laughs> I, yeah. Uh, no, I just know that um, after she killed herself, the king he felt he felt bad. He felt repent repentant of the, trying the, to take the, the wadier jewels. the wadier yeah. guy. Yeah. Yeah, and so he he had an idol of her. Alamalama is how do you right. say that? Okay, um, made in gold and installed it in the palace, and it's uh, worshipped as a deity. Right. So, but that's but they worship. So, fast forward to now, you know when they do what was that ceremony that they do the maid ceremony? I, I the names are so tough for me. Right. You know they do this big ceremony, but, but before that ceremony, there's a little teeny tiny like secret ceremony. Right. So this, yeah. what's, tell us about that. Okay. Well, so yeah, it's jumping ahead a little bit. That's how to mitigate the curse when we haven't talked about the curse yet. But oh, right, right. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Okay, okay. 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 I'm jumping ahead. I'm really super curious uh, about the curse. Now she had uttered these words. Can you break right. each one down? And if it's happened and continue to happen today, right. like the first part uh, may. Talakadu be filled with sand and become mm -hmm. a barren land. Correct. And that has happened. That has happened. So yeah. Talakad is a small town with many temples. God, it's, man, I mispronounced the heck out of that. <laughs> there's actually... A, Talakadu? No, no, what that's wrong with me? That's a, that's a variation. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. what I was saying. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the, uh, you'll find that, in, like, uh, we say Bangalore, but it's mm -hmm. Bengaluru. Okay. So okay, it's, so I was wondering that because yes. I was like, I have it written down differently, and I wasn't, I wasn't sure if it right. was said differently. Yep. So. And I honestly, you know, for the trips that I've made over there, I don't know that why exactly if it's... Okay. Um, you know, from the British side to the mm -hmm. uh, Hindu side or not, but or Hindi yeah. side, sorry. Um, but in any case, uh, Talakad um, has very, very rich soil and is uh, known for growing grapes. It's also known as Bangalore's Gourmet Valley. So this was not oh, a, a, you know, mm -hmm. a desert beforehand. Yeah. This was a really nice place and still continues to be today the areas that <laughs> didn't right. get affected. Um, but that the, the king, um, uh, Tira Malaraja, uh, the one that was, that died on, you know, had his deathbed there. Um, he went to sacrifice at the temple of, uh, the Deus Vera. And while he was there, um, you know, he was trying to cure himself of whatever this disease was, but wasn't able to and passed away there. So after, that's where she went and where she was caught with the, or not with the jewels, and mm -hmm. um, the river runs near the here, so she jumped in at this point. Um, so after this, that she cursed it, uh, sand advanced very rapidly, and the old town is now buried across a stretch of sand of about a, of about a mile. Yeah. Um, some 30 temples are submerged under the sand. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, in, and only two uh, goparams, which are the monumental entrances, uh, remain visible from the area. Yeah. Now, what 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 is a gopuram? The uh, uh, so if you've seen a Hindu temple before, mm -hmm. um, it's the like like Mortal Kombat shape. one where they did some of the training. Wait, what in the movie Mortal Kombat they go to the, like a temple? And they right. Do, do, yeah. Okay. They, like one of those. <laughs> yes. It's the ceremonial <laughs> monumental entrance to the temple. The big giant pointy. Correct. The, yeah. And yeah. so the tops of that are the high points, and mm -hmm. those were sticking out. Okay. Um, Lish, do you want to add? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I came across um, that. Yeah. Every twelve years, they go in and try to dig out. Everything, but the sand just keeps coming back. Right. Um, and I do have a possible scientific reason behind it. Yeah. Okay. Go okay. for it. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so in the 17th century, a dam was constructed. Damn. North of Talcott. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On the uh, Kavari River, which caused the river to be diverted. Now, this exposed a sand deposit in the river, which was then all the monsoon winds kind of kept sweeping it over this area. Okay. So, so there is a possible reason for it, but maybe, I don't know. Maybe it's cursed. Yeah. I don't know. Yep. So, so I kind of piggyback that with the Malika. The river. Um, Melange. The, the Melange. Okay, the Melange River be, be, uh, have a bunch of whirlpools. Turn into a whirlpool. Yeah. That'd be the next part of the curse she uttered. Hold on. Uh, the river is not the Melange. That was the small village across the, from it. Oh, the yeah. Melange, no, you're right. The Melange is the bend in the river. Is yeah, and I, I think there's a town there. Right. Yeah. Kaveri is the river. Yeah, yeah the Kaveri is the river, but the Malangi, I think, is like the river does a bend, and that little region right there mm-hmm. is the Malangi. Right. Yeah. And then the Malangi be cursed with whirlpools. Right. So I took it as the, the you had the dam, and you had the extra like sediment in the seabed, the riverbed mm-hmm. and whatnot, and, and there actually are whirlpools at yeah. that spot. <laughs> so the whirlpool then kind of, it doesn't like consolidate the water but it kind of pulls the water back exposing some of the riverbed Mm -hmm. with the extra amount of wind that comes through there so that's why i was thinking the dam helped create the extra sand the extra the riverbed and then the whirlpools kind of pull the water back exposing it so that the wind can take it and bury the city Okay, that's, that's it. Why are, you, why are you like so proud? <laughs> For uh, since it's a podcast, nobody can see what you're doing. I did like a touchdown. Yeah. Then, you know, uh, yeah, it's like one of the first theories that didn't involve aliens or UFOs. Yeah, so. true. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey, 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 or, or hey, you, yep. hey, yeah, there's still time. Oh, oh, oh. There's still time. <laughs> yep. yep. Um, so, that's 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 really interesting, right? It's yeah. So the you know the you know this reminds me of uh, Devil's Playground, you know, Cursed Land that. There may be scientific explanations, but it's also kind of really just right here. It, right. You know, it, so, mm-hmm. um, yeah. and as you alluded to there, uh, Nash, the Malangi, um, you know, that it's a, there is a small village. It is also the area. Um, and it's across the river from where the queen drowned herself. Oh. And it's also the deepest area of the river. Mm-hmm. And there are, it is known for frequent whirlpools. And that the village itself is eroding away. The whirlpools yeah. are actually because all the whirlpools, dripping. right? Huh. Yeah. So not a lot on that part of the. Um, yeah, yeah the I curse. couldn't find anything really to like expound on. Right. So, so yeah. don't go. <laughs> it's not a place for swimming, correct? Right. Or fishing, <laughs> or any water sports, unless right. you are into very dangerous <laughs> right. windsurfing. Right. I guess you could probably windsurf there. I guess because if it's a whirlpool, you could take the edge, and there's a lot of wind. Do you know depositing the sand? That's a great place for wind for windsurfing. I'll take your word on that one. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> well, Dave, what about the part of the curse? May the king of Mysore be airless. Okay, so this is the what I feel is the most interesting part right. of this. Um, so it's been 19 generations since wow. the uh, the when the curse was uttered till present day, and in that time. Um, no heirs have been produced by the Wadiars directly. That's wild. Right. So it's alternating generations. The mm-hmm. king and queen produce no heirs. They instead adopt a child of, a, you know, they'll adopt like a, a nep- cousin or cousin a nephew. Or nephew or yeah. something. Right. And then that person becomes the next king. And then that person, not being of the lineage, can have a kid. And that heir now is considered part of the water yards. Mm-hmm. But, it, but it still follows. Right. And then they can't have a kid. Right. And wow. Yeah. It's, so it's an alternate generation. Yeah. Correct. Um, so this has gone on and on and to this day continues. Um, you know, it's, um, it's one of those things that uh, I saw a quote, you know, a biologist, you know, it's entirely plausible for this kind of a thing to happen, but really it doesn't, it, it's right. not normal. <laughs> Well, well, but didn't something happen in 2017? Yes. In 2017, yes. didn't didn't one of them have a a little baby? Yeah, I I think the hopefully maybe the curse is broken. Yeah, a prince was born to them on uh, December 6, 2017, in oh, two days. Bangalore, away. Bangalore. Okay, yep. 
Uh, this is the first baby to be born in the family, and people are hoping that this newborn will end this curse. Okay. But now, I was confused. I saw that, but the current king mm-hmm. is the adopted one. Hmm. So oh. for him to have had a kid, yeah. it would so Maybe they're be... jumping the gun on this one. Right. Um, so I was yeah. a little confused on that, and I had when I was in Bangalore with the team... They said to this day it's continuing. Oh, really? Um, but oh, well, they the, the expert, though. this article when I was doing research did pop up, and it you know very clearly in the um, India Times, you know, prominent newspaper. It was yeah. They're, they're trying to be hopeful, I think. Right. right. <laughs> yes. But yeah. Wow. Um, it should be said that there was actually a an heir that was born back in the mid 1700s, um, but um, he was both I think. He's blind and deaf. Blind and deaf, yeah. yes. And did not rule for very long. So they don't really consider that a you know, his brother took over. Right. So So it's like so it's kind of like concrete. So you lay some concrete foundation, okay? And as you lay the foundation, it takes some it takes some time for that concrete to fully cure and kind of get into its own. And while the curse was kind of doing the same thing, it was curing and finally becoming solidified and nothing could get through. This little squeaker came through, and that's how he, he wasn't like, you know, he had the issues, but he was able to kind of squeak one in there. Yeah, because it wasn't a fully cured curse. Huh. Now, for 300 some odd years later, 300 and a half years later, nothing's happening. Hmm. Sure, Nash. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good analogy. Yeah. Well, no, pudding skin uh, yeah, for the win. <laughs> curse concrete. Uh, I know, like uh, it. Now uh, the curse. Uh, it was on the, this particular area. Uh, Liz, you have a, a note that it, is it impacting animals? Mm-hmm. So I found an article from 2015, um, and they were like, "Could the royal animals be affected by this curse as well?" Wow. Um, I didn't even think about that. Right. So there are some people that um, the article, I think, called them insiders. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Uh, They feel as the palace elephants have not had an offspring in the past 25 years, um, (laughs) despite efforts of breeding. And even um, the doctors say they're medically fit to be able to have children (laughs) or babies. Um, Baby, baby elephant. What? <laughs> whoa, whoa! <laughs> kind of reminds uh, me of that scene in uh, Ace Ventura where he's coming out the rhino. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, yeah, they think could it possibly be affecting the palace animals as well? Right, that sucks. Right. <laughs> wow. So, so when we get back to like the the, the jewelry, so they now adorn. They, they still have the the goddess, the statue that they're yes. putting in the ceremonies. So let's go back to this. The, now, what happens in the ceremonies? Right. So the at this point in time, the the um, king and queen are pretty much um, just ceremonial. There yeah. isn't. They have no right. function of government or anything like that. And they they perform one ceremony a year, one main ceremony a year. And that ceremony has a public uh, piece to it, and I guess a private piece. Mm-hmm. Um, and they they go about on this golden chariot. It's a seven hundred kilogram pure gold chariot that they put atop a elephant. One thousand five hundred forty pounds. <laughs> we like yeah. the kid in Jerry Maguire. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know a human head weighs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, so the king will actually process through the the public. On the top of the elephant. That sucks. During this, with that um, thing. Well, I'll come back to that one. But the um, ahead of that, they'll actually put the idol of the queen on the chariot and parade her around privately. That's the, that's the that, secret. That's, that's the, the, the private one, right? Yeah. In order to try to avert the curse, you know, or break the curse. So now they've um, given her like all the jewels, made the chariot of, of gold, made the statue of gold. Right. And then they kind of say like, oh, well, we really screwed the pooch on that one. Right. Or the elephant, huh? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and now we're trying to make amends. Right. And obviously to this day it hasn't worked, but yet they continue to, to perform this right and okay. to um, try to avert the curse. or Like to make curse. a penance or something Correct. like that. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. God, can you imagine a 1,500-pound chariot made of gold? Yeah. There's a lot of gold in this. Uh, it's a lot of gold. Yeah. Palace. It's mm. it's very cool. You know, I was looking at pictures of it, and I was like, wow, this place looks gorgeous. Yes. 
At least the stuff that I was saying, yeah. Huh? Do we need to take a break? Because I'm about to... No, keep going. <laughs> wow, Dave. You know, I... I don't, in the middle of this recording, you're like whispering, should we take a break? Oh, I didn't know when you wanted to cut the break. I can tell. Like, Yeah, this is the first time you had to uh, do all the heavy lifting. You didn't know what we're supposed to do. No, I'm just, I'm fascinated, man. I'm just glued to what you're saying, Dave. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm glad you brought this to us. Yep. Do you got so, more? Uh, a couple more things, uh, mostly around my visit to, to Mysore. Okay. I got to go through the palace and oh, cool. see all of this. I got to see the idol of the uh, the queen, see the golden chariot, see the harnesses that they put the elephants in for the procession and everything, uh, walk through the halls. Um, and they also have a huge room full of pictures of all of the um, kings and their progeny and their adopted progeny oh, and, and all of that. Um, so it's really, really cool. And just... Um, if anyone's been to the Biltmore in North Carolina, it's one of the largest mansions in the U.S. It looks like an efficiency apartment compared to this palace. Really? Yeah. It is, I can't describe the, the majesty of standing there seeing this, this place. Did you go to the bathroom there? Do they, do they have nice bathrooms? I, I, it didn't, I didn't do that. That would be the first thing I would want to do. Go to a palace and go to the bathroom. So I could be like, I went to the some places have really nice bathrooms. Then we'd be talking about the, the curse that you brought upon yourself. Because <laughs> <Right. laughs> you could go to the bathroom in it and you'd be like, wow, this is, this is a bathroom in this place? Wow, this is amazing. Hmm. Americans. So, yeah. Right, first thing. Try to, try, to, try to plug up the toilet. All All right. Right. Um, Let's take a break. We're going to come back with some listener feedback and who knows what else we'll do. We'll be right back. And we're back. All right. And Lish, I knew you had a couple things of other cursed families. Yes. Uh, So I was like, I wonder how many other families could possibly be cursed. Uh, And I had quite a few that I found. Um, So I'm going to start with this one. Uh, The Grimaldi family of Genoa. They were apparently cursed by a witch. Uh, The Grimaldi name was cursed because one of the family members, uh, Lord Rainier I, committed a pretty heinous crime against a girl. I think we can um, assume right. it was what bad. it was. Yeah. It was really bad. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, she survived, but she then went to learn the art of witchcraft so that she could curse him. Nice. Now, the curse states, no Grimaldi will find happiness in marriage. I mean, I would have possibly done something right. much more, right. but that's cool. Uh, but apparently... Yeah, being married, I gotta say, there are some other avenues <laughs> you could do. Uh, <laughs> Apparently, in this family, there's a ton of failed marriages. Uh, they have tumultuous love lives. There's freak accidents and death as well. Um, so I just thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, it was a witch that cursed them. Yeah. But now in 2001, Prince Dipendra of the royal family of Nepal, he, I don't know why, he shot his parents as well as eight other people before he shot himself. That's not good. No. He survived... And was in a coma. Uh, and, of course, they, he's the only one that's left in the family, so they crowned him king. And, but he had passed away, like, soon after that. Uh, as the 10th generation of the royal family, his death marked the manifestation of Garakanath's curse. Now, Old Garakanath. I know. <laughs> Gar- Garakanath was a yogi in the uh, 11th century who apparently had supernatural powers. Now, legend claims that the first king of a unified Nepal once came in contact with him. Uh, He offered this king some food, and the king refused it. And apparently, this showed disrespect to him. Uh, The yogi told him that his line would fall after 10 generations. So the fact that this kid was the 10th generation, and yeah. They're done. Their family's done, at least. Uh, And then the last one I have. The House of Habsburg apparently suffers from two curses. Now, Count von Altenburg, he built a sanctuary for ravens. Where the... (laughs) For ravens. uh, Where the Habsburgy... I'm sorry. (laughs) Habsburgy? Habsburg Castle was to stand. Uh, When the Habsburg family made renovations to the castle, it upset the ravens in such a way that they began attacking the family. So the Habsburg family, they retaliated by eradicating the birds. 
<laughs> Legend states that a raven is spotted right before a tragedy befalls a member of the Habsburg family. Mm. Now, in another legend, Countess Carolyn placed a second curse on the family after the Countess's son was slain on the authority of the ruler of... Francis Joseph? Yeah, Francis Joseph, the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Now, Francis' wife, she was slain. His son took his own life. And his nephew, Franz Ferdinand... Is that a band? Yes. Uh, yes. after him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he was assassinated, which led to the start of World War One. Yep. So. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for those uh, tidbits. <laughs> and Dave, thank you. Yeah. And all your uh, uh, co-workers... We're in India. Uh, right. Very, uh, very interesting topic. Yep. On the socials, Lish had posted about, uh, have you ever had a paranormal experience? And some people weighed in. We heard from Alberto, driving my tractor trailer through Yuma, uh, proving oh, grounds. I'm so sorry. Uh, in Arizona at like 3 a.m. I was kind of tired, I guess, but I was very aware of my surroundings. I'm not speeding. Following the posted sign limit of 65... Coming up quick, quickly was a white wolf on my right side. Oh, that's cool. I was freaked out like I was about to hit it because it was very close on the edge of the pavement. I held onto the steering wheel and waited for the thumping of the hit. But nope, nothing. Maybe he had a millisecond to move out uh, of the way of his truck. Don't know. It haunted me to this day. This occurred in 2006. The wolf was pure white like snow. And it looked at me. It's just creepy. Uh, the truck and the truck front end had no signs of a hit, no blood, no fur, nothing. Wow. Thanks, Alberta. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yikes. That'd be freaky. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wonder if it's a symbol of some sort. Hmm. Yeah. The White Wolf. Mm-hmm. Was that in Game of Thrones? I think so. Or wasn't that Bucky? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, it was it something I saw on TV. <laughs> yeah. We heard from, uh, Miss Jess, my grandparents' house is near this place called Brattonsville, which a lot of uh, the Le- Revolutionary War took place. It was in South Carolina. Uh, the movie The Patriot was actually filmed at this place. Need to say my grandparents' house is extremely haunted. Cabinets would fly open and stuff would come flying out of my grandmother's closet. Mm. It'll sound like everything being ripped off the shelves and you go in there, nothing's out of place. One time I was asleep in a room. And the closet door flew open, and an orb shot out of the closet. It sounded like somebody was running through the house. And then it sounded like they opened and slammed the front door, and then there was running down the steps. There's also a girl in a long white dress with really long red hair. She's a little girl that people have seen. Luckily, I have not seen that, LOL. Well, thanks, Miss Jess. Yeah. Uh, let's see, H.S. Cozen. Repeated sightings of a shadow person made by multiple people, broad daylight and at night, with no sleep paralysis involved. Spooky, but benign. You, you think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I guess nothing happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. Kennedy, 22. Uh, where do I begin, LOL? That would be Sean, <laughs> who gonna... uh, he's the one who took us to uh, Jenny Wade House to oh, get that mm-hmm. private yep. thing. Yep. Thanks, Sean. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing your paranormal stories with us. That's uh, awesome. Uh, anything weird uh, happened to you guys lately? Hmm. Mm. Not really. Mm-hmm. How about uh, yeah. the people that need paranormal punches to come in and investigate ghost cows? Any new reports? <laughs> Not that I've heard. Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, we're going to investigate right. ghost cows, right? Right. Yep. I mean... If, Recall paranormal punches. It sounds like right up our, na- our <laughs> <Yeah>. alley <laughs> to check out ghost cows. Yep. I found a place in Colombia that we should do a a, a, a hunt at. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was at the bar having a few beers over Starvia. And he was like, there's a place right here, right down the street. Mm. Mm-hmm. I'll get nice. More, I'll get more intel. Okay. And come back to you. Okay. Awesome. All right. That's all the feedback I have. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a little light on the feedback. Right. If you want to send us feedback, go to paranormalpunchers.com. You'll find all the ways to contact us. Uh, we would love to hear from you. So, the holidays are coming up, so everybody be safe. Happy holidays. We'll be back with something fun next time, something a little different, uh, just to have a little fun uh, before all the holiday craziness 
starts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So until then, everybody, you rock. Thank you. If it's not weird. <laughs> it's not worth checking out. Mm-hmm.